Now, in most cases, when a car comes into the shop and it has an ECT circuit high, your first indication is more than likely that sensor is going to be unplugged or it's missing a ground. Stop worrying about swapping parts. Instead, let me show you how to read scan tool data so you can properly diagnose any car that comes into the shop. Let's take a look. What's up, guys? Oscar Gomez here from Master Automotive Training. Hey, if you haven't done so already, give us a like and a follow and make sure you turn on that notification bell so you get a ding every time we drop a new video. So don't worry about swapping parts. Make sure you guys stick around so I can show you how to read scan tool data to help you much quickly figure out what's going on with the car. Shout outs to our buddies at AutoFix for the D1 light that we're going to test out today on this problem that I induced and you guys are going to stick around and figure out what I caused on this particular car. If you're trying to pick up your own auto fix and you guys like the information you're going to see today, make sure you check out my link in the bio that also has a discount code so you can pick up your own D1 Lite. Let's get ready and let's take a look. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. As you guys already know, for me, I always start with EOBD first. So we're going to click on EOBD. And now the tool is doing its thing. It's talking to the dongle, which I already put into the DLC. Now, if you guys... I've talked about this before, but if you're not aware, these are all the communication protocols that exist in an automotive vehicle. Now, for me, because anything 2008 and newer, we automatically know that's a CAN bus protocol. So I'm just going to go to 15765-4 CAN or controller area network. If you don't know what the protocols are, I strongly recommend that you guys read up on what the protocols are. And with time, you're going to start to know which vehicle uses what specific protocol. If you guys want to know more information about that, make sure you guys check out my link in the bio where you get a three-day free trial to my online engine performance and electrical class. So make sure you guys check that out. All right, so what we're going to do here is first things first, let's go ahead and go to DTCs and let's see what's going on with this particular wonderful, beautiful vehicle that we got here with us today. So the Stabling Communication. All right, so a couple things we know right off the bat. If you guys have seen my other videos on this particular car, we do have a PO420 CAT efficiency code. We're going to ignore that today because obviously we already know that that code is there. Uh, the one that we're going to really focus on today is going to be the P0118. So that's an ECT temperature circuit high, right? So for me, as an automotive technician, the first thing that comes to my mind is, cool, I got a vehicle here that has a circuit high code. So when a vehicle has a circuit high code, a couple things that come to mind. Number one, either I got an open circuit on the signal. Number two, I'm missing a ground for that particular sensor. Number three, I got a bad sensor, right? Uh, th those are some of the things that automatically come to mind. Um, if you guys notice, because we already had a code here, which was for the cat, the freeze frame is not giving us any information. Now, you might be wondering why we don't have freeze frame information if we have a ECT code engine coolant temp code. The reason why we don't is the PCM is programmed to prioritize emission failures. So because of that, because we have a catalytic converter code, if it was a misfire or a fuel uh, fuel imbalance code, then obviously, yes, we would have had that code supersede the PO420. Because we have a PO420, the freeze frame data is still only going to be for that specific code. All right. So from there, we're going to go ahead and escape that. Obviously, we, we know now that that's what we got going on. So let's go into our live data real quick, and let's see if we can spot anything. Now, being that as of right now, the DTC I'm having is for ECT circuit high, I'd want to focus on that um, along with my fuel status, right? My And then let's go to ECT, right? And then also, I want to take a look at the fuel trim so we can see what's going on there. And we will graph those real quick. Right. So the important one is going to be our blue, which is our ECT. It's showing a negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This thing is showing that it's excessively cold. Okay. So what is an engine computer going to do when it detects a super cold condition? Well, when an engine computer detects a cold condition, what ends up happening is when the temperature is excessively cold, the fuel that is injected out of the injector in a mist form is going to reliquify, right? So we don't want that because liquid fuel doesn't ignite. 
what the engine computer does when it detects cold, sorry, cold temperatures, it is going to uh, add more fuel. And the reason why is because since it thinks the engine is colder and the atmosphere is colder, that fuel is going to um, liquefy again. So it's going to add extra fuel in case of some of that fuel becoming liquid once again or recondensing. So that's why the vehicle tends to run a lot richer anytime that you have that kind of fault. Okay. So again, here we know that we got negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So at this point, it is going to be something that we are going to go look at at the actual ECT. So let's go ahead and head out to the car. So let's take a look underneath the hood and let's see what we spot there. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take this paper clip and we're going to insert it into the ECT harness connector. And this is why I'm going to do this. This is going to help me verify if the circuit, the 5 volt reference and the signal return back to the PCM are 100% okay. When I bridge it, we should have a change on the ECT temperature on our scan tool. So we're going to go ahead and bridge it. And then afterwards, we're going to come back and take a look at the scan tool and see what the data is telling us. Let's go take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my paper clip. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the scan tool data. Wonderful. So now let's go ahead and go back into our scan data and let's see what our live data is showing us. So we're going into live data and we're going to go ahead and go back to our engine coolant temp. And we want to set that to a value that we understand, which would be Fahrenheit. And if you guys notice right now, it's showing 284 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is letting me know that the circuit for the actual ECT is perfectly fine. And at this point, if this was a car that came into the shop with this specific code, right? And the connector itself was actually plugged in because you guys saw that I had unplugged it, then I would know that this is a bad sensor. Now, because the sensor was unplugged, right? The high circuit was an automatic instantaneous clue to me that more than likely this sensor was going to be disconnected or open on the ground side or the signal, the 5 volt reference to the actual sensor. Let me re-explain it another way, just in case it was kind of like, what? So when we're looking at an ECT, an engine coolant temp sensor, it's going to be a two wire sensor. Five volts, five volts go to the sensor. Based off of the resistance value of the thermistor, there's going to be a voltage drop. That voltage drop is detected by an internal voltmeter inside of the PCM, and that's how the PCM knows what the temperature is of the particular vehicle. Now, in most cases, when a car comes into the shop and it has an ECT circuit high, your first indication is more than likely that sensor is going to be unplugged or it's missing a ground. So then go visually check it, right? You guys notice when we went out to the engine bay, it was already unplugged. So if that was a situation, the car came into the shop, plug it back in and then come analyze your data. What I did here was just a verification test by using the paper clip. I bridged my five volt reference back to my signal return. The PCM saw a 284 degree um, change, which to me indicates the circuits actually pretty good. In most cases, in some cases, I'm sorry, you'll probably see upwards of 300, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So that would mean that it's shorted, right? So in this case, we know that the circuit's fine. And so if you're at the shop and this car comes in, it's plugged in, unplug it and put a paper clip or a jumper wire. By doing so, if you see that the, the temperature goes back up, then that's telling you the circuit's fine. Now you just really confirm it's a bad sensor. Now that we learned about ECTs and the circuit and how to run some quick checks, let's go ahead and clear the light. Just so this way we make sure that we reset the vehicle before we send it out back on the road, right? So from here, we're going to go into, uh, let's see here. Vehicle status live data, I think DTC is here. So we're going to go back to DTCs. This is the first time I use this tool, so it's not nothing too crazy. Very similar to what I'm used to on my Autel Ultra. Then we're gonna hit erase codes. Freeze room be deleted, yes, that's fine. All right, cool. So if you guys are not in an emission state, in the state of California, we have, well, not just California, any vehicle 2010 and newer is gonna have PDTCs, permanent diagnostic trouble codes. 
So after you clear the light, the vehicle is going to store a permanent diagnostic trouble code. You could clear, you could remove, disconnect the battery. You could do anything you want, but it's not going to get rid of that code. What's going to end up happening is once the vehicle goes through its normal drive cycles, then it's actually going to clear it on its own once it tests and knows that the problem has actually been repaired. So again, this is going to get give get rid of the parts changers um, or the parts hangers that don't actually test stuff, just replace parts. Right. So now that we've cleared the codes, let's go ahead and escape and we'll go back to verify that codes are gone. Just one more time. Codes are gone, just our permanent codes. So we know that we are 100% go. And that's how simple it is, guys. Most of the time, what ends up happening is we like to overcomplicate things. And a lot of times, too, unfortunately, due to lack of training, that's when we struggle with these types of diagnostics. When a car comes in and it has a high circuit code, first thing you should think is it's probably unplugged or the ground is open, right? If you get a code that says low circuit, more than likely it's grounded and it's pulling it down to zero volts, okay? So always make sure that you analyze what the code is telling you, go look up how that how that component works, and then from there you can take it and get it diagnosed. And as I said, guys, if you like the AutoFix D1 Lite, make sure you guys check out the link in my bio, which also has a discount code so you guys can pick one up for yourself. Dude, it's only 120 bucks for the annual renewal. You can't go wrong. It's an Android platform with Autel software behind it. It's a great, solid tool. Also, if you guys want to learn more about electrical or drivability, make sure you guys check out my link below where you can get access to my online community for only 20 bucks a month. And you get access to a lot of my new live classes, which are going on every Thursday and Friday. You also get access to our lunchtime class, which is usually every Wednesday, every other Wednesday for one hour. And you get a three day free trial. You can't go wrong. It's cheaper than going out to Starbucks. So if you guys like this information, make sure you guys give us a like and a follow and turn on that notification bell. So this way you're aware every time we drop a new video. And if you guys have any suggestions for any other videos, drop it in the comments. And as, as always, guys, we're here to better the automotive industry one technician at a time. This starts with you and I'll see you guys on the next one.